Fly Cap Cafe Racer. I think what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to change the gearing on my Thruxton R. Um, I still have one of the sprockets on the front sprocket on the on a Thruxton R from Bonneville. I got a 17 tooth on it right now. I think I'm going to change it to a 16 tooth so I have a, my stock gearing on it. That's the case Mr. Bill sneaks up on me with that big old Rocket 3. Stay tuned. Really, it's not much to do on this. Uh, I've changed these sprockets out a lot of times, and I do get kind of forgetful sometimes. But uh, you, you take this cover off, you take this cover off, and there's a little plastic, the reservoir underneath it for the coolant. You take that out. Then uh, I use the air impact gun to get it off. So I'll make sure I put it in gear before I uh, take all this stuff off, and uh, we'll see. clarify when I said these two covers come off I mean they come off if you just take this off they'll both come off next we're going to remove this 10 millimeter and this 10 millimeter and we're going to remove it from this clip right there and kind of pull this back when you pull this back you want to make sure that you Pay attention to the routing of this particular hose. You're not going to remove this one, but there's another one right inside here. You're going to remove that one and this one to get this little cover on. Unclip this right here. You unclip that. These two bolts are that I just removed are a different size. So this particular longer one goes up into here and a shorter one goes right into here and it's also held when you put the cover back on it'll be held up right in here I think it's always a good opportunity when you take these things off is to go ahead and clean them up a little bit and get some of the grit and grime out of there once you get to this point what we're going to be doing is straighten up the uh, tabs on this lock washer here and on mine I have it bent over twice usually you only see it once so we're going to do that then then we can take this nut off I truly don't know which one of these you can reuse these things sometimes a couple times so but today I'm going to put a brand new one on but you can see I've got some of the used ones here from not so bad to the worst I wouldn't use except in an emergency so in, you can like I said most of the time you can use those over more than once so the tabs are straightened up just use a uh, basically a chisel and a hammer to kind of straighten those up and uh, now with the chain on there I can go ahead and break that uh, nut loose with the impact gun now you'll need a 36 millimeter socket to break loose this thing and I keep mine torqued to a little over a hundred foot pounds uh, on a hundred but uh, I think the spec actually calls for more than that but I don't do mine I've never done it more than that so so stand by <laughs> Good thing to do is to pay attention to which way this comes off. I'm going to take a little bit of this rust off here. But this is the inside. It's got like a little lip on it. And the outside doesn't. Okay? So I'm going to clean this off just a little bit. The only thing I used to kind of clean the, a little bit of this rust off here was uh, this little brush and a little scotch bright here. Scuffing pad. Then I'm going to Put a little ACF 50 on it for the corrosion, help prevent the corrosion. Then we'll take the, uh, we'll take this all one off here. We're probably going to loosen up the back wheel, scoot it forward so we can put, makes it easier putting the, taking one off and putting the all one, a new one back on. So uh, I loosened up the uh, 
back wheel and pushed it forward just a little bit so I can take this 17 tooth sprocket on. Now I'll wiggle the uh, 16 tooth on. Just for informational purposes, I don't I don't see that there's any difference in uh, the sprockets either side. So, you know, which way is, there's not, I don't think there's like a right way or a wrong way for these sprockets to go on. Now it's a kind of wiggly bit to get this back on because you got to fit up over this. So you want to make sure you get it on and push all the way up against. But what happens is if, if you put the chain in the sprocket, then take it back out of gear so you can turn it then you can kind of eventually you can wiggle it back on here pretty easy sometimes it's a little harder if you just you can put the sprocket on pretty easy but then it gets a little hard to put the chain on I prefer to put the chain on the sprocket and just turn it until it slips in okay I've got the new one of these washers on and I've tightened it up just a little bit finger tight and I'm gonna pull the wheel back to put some tension on this chain and I got it back in gear then once I tighten it with a the air uh, air gun here then I can bend one of these tabs over now the hardest part for me is to readjust the chain so I've got the chain adjusted I've got a little red I don't know if you can see this in here or not is it one link it's marked red that's usually the um, the loosest part of my chain and I usually put that right there and I'll double check make sure it's the loosest part but I'll put that right there and I'll adjust the chain and um, once I get this tightened back up on here I'll adjust the chain again or I'll look at it make sure that it hasn't moved too much uh, you can hear my compressor running I'm gonna let it get up about 105 psi then I'm gonna go over and use the air gun once at about 105, now I'm going to do it just a second time till the air pressure goes down to about 80. Then it'll be done. You may want to have to get it started to, to bend over with, with this. Then you can kind of finish it off with a, a punch. He said, finish it off with a punch. Uh, that's, been, that's been over plenty enough right there. Now it's all we got to do is put it back together. And, uh, this piece back on, and remember there's a hole up here, so you want to kind of keep that lined up. And you put this longer bolt in here, and a shorter bolt in here, and make sure this is hooked back up. Put your overflow tank back on, and there's a, like a little indention in this overflow tank, so it's hard to get this tube wrong. So, And you don't have to tighten these 10 millimeters up very tight. Now's a good time to go ahead and check the fluid level while you're here and wipe off some of the, the dirt and the fingerprints so it's a lot easier to read. I'm putting this cover back on. I prefer to start with this one because it's got the little metal tank here and then you can kind of move it around and see how you want to. You can see this little it's a metal piece here from the that cover. So if you do that one first, it makes it a little easier. There it is, all back together, no problems. The uh, longest piece it takes for me is to adjust the chain. I get kind of picky on that. I usually run my chain almost a little bit loose, so I have to, I'm very careful with that and on the, on the adjustment. So that takes me probably 15 or 20 minutes to, for my a chain adjustment. But the rest of it probably is, I don't know, maybe maybe another hour so give yourself an hour 45 minutes if you got a air gun if you don't then uh, get a big cheetah bar and a friend well I hope you like that uh, I'm running a six stock 1642s on there right now like I said I play around with the sprockets a lot some of you know that I do drag racing in the Bonneville so I have run anything from a 16, 17, or 18 on the front to a 42, 40, and 37 on the back, or in combinations of those. And a motor is such a good motor, it pulls almost anything. So right now, 
if I can ride this thing, uh, that's probably the best gearing for drag racing and, and meet Mr. Bill and his big old Rocket 3. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.